Hello and welcome to this Swift tutorial and in this video I'm going to talk about how you can ignore the user. Now that might sound pretty harsh but it actually is in both parties interest. It's all about when you're loading big tasks like completing huge tasks in the background you want to keep your user outside you don't want to messing around with multiple buttons or doing something that's going to screw up the whole process instead you want to ignore the user for a while do the task in the background and then get back to the user so i'm going to show you how to do that in this video so let us take a look at how we ignore the user and in order to do that, do that we create a new xcode project let's make it a single the application and i want to name this ignore user it sounds more harsh than it is because it's actually very help helpful for the user if you do this now let's open up our main starboard and drag in a button so this button is going to call an event and it's connected up with our view controller so we're going to select the button control drag it in and i'm going to call it action and it's going to be an action and just connect it. Now, this hasn't anything to do really with the what I'm trying to, or it, it has something to do with what I'm trying to demonstrate, but it isn't, you can use this in any way you like. This is just one of the instances, instances in where it's incredibly useful, useful to ignore the user's interaction with your application. So I'm going to demonstrate why right now. So I'm going to create a URL so as you might have guessed i am creating a url session which is going to be h or first url i see url from a string and my string is https colon slash slash google.com just like that and then i'm going to create a task based on that url so let task is equal to url session dot shared dot data task with the url and just double tap here so we get our completion handler data response and error and our url is going to be the one we just defined now we aren't going to get any data from the internet but this is how you would do it now here i'm going to show you why it is so great to ignore the user sometimes so right now when Let's see, I'm just going to check if there has been an error. If error is not equal to nil, it's not equal to nil. And keep in mind, this is just one of the scenarios in which this is a great case to use. Print success. And then remember to say task.resume in order to start the whole process. Now I'm going to launch it. And as you will see, in no point of this application am I ignoring the user. That means that even though the URL session is loading and working in the background, my user can still interact with the app. And this is not going to lead to any crash because it's such a simple app. But as you can see, I can click on it as many times as I want to and thereby creating unnecessary amounts of data tasks. Let's say your app is loading, it's preparing something, and meanwhile the app is launching hundreds of these session, uh, sessions because the user just keeps on tapping. Now, when you're doing uh, some strenuous tasks in the background, you always want to make sure that you first of all ignore the user so that this doesn't happen, because else you will just overload your app unnecessarily by launching too many of a certain instance so what you want to do is you want to say application or i mean ui application ui application dot shared dot begin ignoring interaction events and then when you are done with the whole task you simply say ui application dot shared dot uh, end ignoring interaction events now, as you will see, instead of being able to launch hundreds of these before the task is even done, I am uh, doing so that the user can't further interact with my app. So while I'm loading, I, may, I might have launched several instances. I didn't. So I clicked it three times, but it didn't launch three instances because I disabled the interaction events. So when I write this, 
the user is not able to interact with my app. But then when I'm done, I set uh, the app to take on the interaction events again. So this is something powerful to keep in your toolbox, just to make sure that the user can't uh, hurt any processes or screw up anything while you are loading big data tasks. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, this little quick tip. Now, if you did, make sure that you click the subscribe button so that you stay tuned for future videos. Thank you for watching.